So last meeting was a preamble. The power to do export. Praise God. It is everyone's dream and everyone's desire to do export. Doing export is to have a great fit or achieve a great result. Or having an extraordinary achievement that comes from above. So it's everybody desire. I want to do exploit, you want to do exploit. So exploit is something that happens and that is always a difference. You make a difference. So exploit is not limited to in terms of work or limited to your place of work but it cross across, cut across. You can do exploit as a wife, you do exploit as a husband in your marriage, do exploit in your place of your work and everything. And as a destiny, have you discovered what God has ordained you to do? Praise the name of the Lord. And so we'll be looking at some prerequisite that is needed before one can do exploit. We are talking about the power to do export. There is a power to do export. But before we look at the power, or what the power is, we want to look at some factors, some prerequisites, some things that are needed, that are required. In the book of Daniel chapter 11 from verse 32, the Bible says, They that do know their God, they shall do what? They shall be strong. They will do what? They will do exploit. So nobody can just wake up overnight and begin to do exploit. Now you should be able to not just thinking outside the box, but looking at your environment and do something different, differently. So Daniel is telling us here from experience. And we will see the export he did or he made while he was in the strange land. And so if there is anybody who will look at as an example, then it's the life of Daniel. And if there is any man again who will look at like, as an example, is the life of Joseph. So Daniel was speaking from experience. For whoever that would make or would do exploit. Now, as a child of God, as a member of this kingdom, that such a person will know God. He must be strong. He must know God. Amen. Amen. Now, knowing God, number one, is the number one prerequisite. We have different goals. Your relationship with your God is you are subjecting your life to, to a higher deity. That's what it means. When you bow down before an altar, you are subjecting your life and everything to that altar. When you bow down before a tree and you choose a tree to become your God and what you worship, what you are doing in essence is you are subjecting everything about you to that tree. Knowing fully well, whenever you go to the tree and you bow down, you worship it, you reference that tree, the tree helps you. To win battle, defend you, bring favor, and could do anything to you. So anything that is like a god or whatever you bow down to, it means that person, that thing is higher, and that thing has an ability to satisfy your desire. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Daniel is trying to let us know that we cannot do exploit in anywhere. For us to do exploit as children of God, number one, we must know God. So we started with this last week, and I was telling us knowing God is sometimes it's deeper than what we know. Deeper than what we can explain. So knowing God is not just to come to church. Knowing God is not just to come to pray. 
the name of our Lord Church. Are we together? So when you know somebody, the person knows you, you can explain or you can vouch for that person as a result of the knowledge you have concerning that person. We have seen relationships that crash within two years, one year, three years. Why? Because of lack of knowledge. Not Whatever that made marriage to last, it is a knowledge and the understanding the two couple has. Praise the name of the Lord. For where there is no knowledge, then it affects the growth of that marriage. So there is a lot of mystery behind knowledge. So knowledge takes time for you to know, to acquire or to learn, to know what it is, to have understanding what it is. So knowing God is not by peripheral or by surface or by lips. See, my people come to me. They draw to me with lips, but they are far away from me. So knowing God is more than that. So as Daniel knew God. And so he could, he, we could see it. You could be a witness of what happened to him. By experience, he knew God. He faced challenges and he stood by what he knows and what he believes. I was telling us in the last meeting the reason why you must separate yourself that is always a need to set yourself apart. So setting apart is another word that is being used as holiness. So Jesus said be holy for I am holy. So in other words, he's saying, be apart, set yourself apart the way I've set myself apart. Set yourself apart the way I have set myself apart. Daniel. When Daniel and his brethren were called upon with all other people from other countries to Babylon. In the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. What the king will eat, they will eat. The one the king will drink, they will drink. But they knew that they were in a strange land. And so they knew their God. And they were able to discover the God that rules in Babylon. They knew that the God of Israel, it is not what they meant. So the condition has changed. Worshiping the same God we worship, do they believe in the same God we believe? Are we of the same faith? So when they when they went into that land, they were able to discover many things, and so they, there was a need for them to separate themselves. You cannot be exploited. You are in the world and you behave like a world, and you want to cross a church. No. to do export on their own side. So when the Bible says be holy, what is telling you in essence is separate yourself. Be apart. So what are those things is asking you to be set apart, to be separated. So Daniel knew, Daniel was not carried away with what the king eats.
is like this. The people you could see this environment are like this. Now all of these are just mere excuses. Environment will remain the way it is. What brings changes and development to environment are the people in the environment. So there is never an environment that has been developed overnight without somebody there developing it. Hey, all environments you know, there will be once a village push. But as people keep migrating and settling down in those environments, they bring innovation and changes. To the point that when you go to the environment, you see the whole street is being tied. Some streets are not tied, you see lights like everywhere. You see edifice, building, attractive things. Now, it all happened as a result of the people that are there. So God has deposited, has given us something that through us will go cause change. So the environment will not change us, irrespective of how difficult the environment is. So Daniel found himself in such situation. It was an environment that was so tough. And they were going there. A kind of competition and, you know, they were invited with all other people. So they gave them that opportunity. They became special students. So special. So they were treated very specially, so unique. And so they were giving them a first class treatment. Even some of the citizens could not afford such privileges. But Daniel don't look at it. He look at his God. He look at what he believes. He look at what he stand for. He look at his faith. And he knew his God. And they come to the service and say, no, that we will not be part of this. So they went to the eunuch and said, no, what we need to do, give us a vegetable, we are okay. And the man that was in charge was looking at for the what, what is this man saying? The one thing of Babylon is not just in charge of Babylon. God has given the king power that rules other nations were under him. So it was not just a mere nation, no. But it was a nation that was full of corruption. It was a nation that never knew God. It was a nation that never followed the things of God. But here was a man that claimed to have God and believe God and find himself in that nation. So in all of the opportunity, they said, no, we will not be part of this. Give us a vegetable and we are okay. So they subjected themselves on a fast and a vegetable and water. Instead of drinking the wine that the king was drinking, they were taking water and vegetable. somewhere 
is your flesh. So a man that can also subject his flesh, under subjection or controlling flesh, under subjection, then that man will have little or no result. Praise the name of the Lord Church. So if you are looking at what is your first enemy in life, Is a witch. No. The first enemy of the man is the flesh he carries. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I was supposed to say that the spirit is really. But what happened? The flesh is weak. So that is the first enemy you have to deal with. So if I thought there will be any attack to any man. Will come through the flesh because the flesh will also place a demand. And going further, the point number two for us to be able to do export, we are looking at some of the prerequisite, the factors that will enable us to exercise this power and to exercise it to full. Number two is discipline. You must be disciplined. So discipline is key in this place. If you want to do a sport in your business, you just have to be disciplined. A man that is not disciplined can never do a sport. He cannot. Praise God. Amen. Now discipline here, it is not something you say the grace of God help me. Or better your skills. There are things they put side by side. One on your left, one on your right. And you are the middle. The one on the left, the one on the right. This one is calling you. This one is calling you. 